Well, now I gotta make a short uh, stub arbor for grinding, not for milling, but just for the uh, uh, cutter grinder. A little chip in there, it looks like. I use this chuck a lot. This is an 8 inch steel bodied union chuck in very good condition. I was cutting some cast iron, it's hard to get all the little pieces out. I even had the jaws out, I think, the last time. Let's get that out of here. And to get that thing uh, just about centered, we're way off here. <laughs> Somewhere to there. Hey, I hope you're all doing good. Sunday morning, very early. Well, actually kind of late, almost 6.30. The day's almost gone. Okay, let's get that uh, basically uh, looking pretty good. I think I like that extension. That should be okay. Oh, a little bit this way. Good old four-jaw chuck. I use the... Uh, Oh, three jar a little too much and this is some pretty tough pre-hard steel here and my eight inch three jaw I have to over tighten it and I think that damages it and what do we got here oh within ten thousandths anyway okay that's high. That's low. These inner rapids work uh, opposite. Let's see where we're going here. That's high. Man, it's going to get hot today, 107. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's got to go tight. Getting close. It's a good thing I'm not in a big hurry, huh? <laughs> yeah, don't get in a hurry in this hot water. Okay, that's uh, low, I think. I find that high again. Right there's high. Whoop, high. A little bit low right there. Get real close now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A guy now that uh, could play drums and do machine work told me uh, tightening these uh, four jaws is like uh, tuning a drum. You want every, <laughs> you want it all uh, equal tension. Yeah, that's high. I'm going to get this running uh, better than two thousandths because uh, I'm going to run it as uh, fast as I can. And it'll send it a little bit out of balance. It's within a half thousand there. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to check all of those to make sure they're about the same tension. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, half thousandths. That's good enough. All right. Well, I... Uh, going to keep grinding a little bit, but I got a lot of other things to do. Now, I had to work on that to, to get the finger in there, because I was using a solid finger, and I had to move this slightly, like just swing it away when I index cutters. But I was mostly uh, doing heavy-duty cutters with this. And uh, doing doing small cutters and stuff like end mills, I didn't do very much on end mills below three quarter of an inch because there was so many uh, surplus end mills available around. But that source seems to have dried up, so now I'm doing end mills too. Okay, I'm gonna get that arbor complete with the cutter back into there and finish grinding that and uh, I'll be back with a variety of things because they do a variety of things. Okay, have a good morning. I need to make an attachment for the uh, tool and cutter grinder to fit in this inch and a quarter end mill holder, 50 cat taper. <laughs> and what I've got in here is inch and a quarter TGP, turn ground and polished steel, and it's really a nice piece, with a boring head on the end. And what I did, I used this to bore the bushing uh, in the position it's going to be. Uh, for my horizontal arbor support that was missing on the machine and that's how I lined it up. So what I got to do is uh, this fits tight but you can rotate it. Let's see. Yeah see it's real snug in there and I want to recreate that fit and I can do it with this lathe here, but it, it's been over a hundred degrees for a week here, kind of pinned me down, <laughs> 107 yesterday. And uh, the temperature in the garage here is about 80 degrees, and I've got fans circulating air through here, but that's 12 degrees above the normal temperature you're supposed to use a, pre a precision lathe uh, 68 degrees or 20 centigrade which is kind of a standard in industry so I can't use this machine because the thermal overload in the vacuum tube drive will shut the machine down because it'll overheat it's already hot because it's got vacuum tubes so to get by not everybody's got one of these, and uh, they're sure handy to have. So instead of using this, I'm going to have to go over here to the axle center. Now, if you remember, <laughs> I found the correct nose radius for the tool to get the best finish I can out of this machine. Now, the Monarch 10 EE over there, I can hit plus or minus one ten thousandths every time in most any material except mild steel. I never machine mild steel to high tolerances because there's no reason to. So I always work with our, and what we have here is a, a pre hard 4140 alloy. Uh, remnant of <laughs> so I'm going to turn that to that inch and a quarter but I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to hit it high and then work it down 
Now, most people that operate weights and stuff will take sandpaper, like get it a couple tenths or a half oversized, then take like emery cloth and sandpaper and work it down. And that's actually considered really poor practice. And I'll show you a different method. It's very simple. It's a, a lapping method using wet. And uh, I'll get into that. But I'm going to take and start working that down, and then I'll take my finish cuts with the uh, nine six, you know, three sixty four <laughs> nose radius that matches the feed on this machine. Now, these older machines have a pretty coarse, fine feed. This one here is. Uh, 0 0.0027, almost three thousandths, and some some are quite a bit coarser than this, and that's why it has to have a larger nose radius, or it leaves uh, those tracks like uh, record grooves. So that's what that nose radius is about, and nine sixty or three sixty fourth is about the minimum. Now in the Monarch 10 E, it has uh, one half a thousandth, so that's like one sixth of this, and uh, you can uh, have a nose radius uh, like 20 thousandths, 15, 20 thousandths is what I do. So you have to have a, a larger nose radius with a coarser feed. And, uh, I've got everything set up on this machine the best I can possibly get it. Everything's good with the spindle bearings. Uh, it's not good to run spindle bearings loose like it's not good to run them tight. The spindle bearings got loose on this over the years and was run a bit that way. And it takes a while to get them back. It, it's like, uh, I don't know. At first I was getting some pretty bad finishes and I had quite a bit of pushover I did in an early DD video. And uh, I, I think I could push it over more than a thousand, so now you can't push it over at all. But it just took time to get this machine in the condition that it's in. And plus it, it, it's a little bit twisted and it's finally leveling out nice now. So all's working good with this machine, but I just want to point out I've done everything I possibly can to get the adjustments fit on this machine. Okay, well I'll get back to that and um, get that cut and uh, we'll go from there because I want to grind, use this uh, for grinding over here on the cutter grinder. a stub arbor and uh, it's really helpful for uh, like using cutoff wheels and things like that. There's a, a real serious cutoff wheel here. This is a non-reinforced cutoff wheel. And I'll tell you what, is <laughs> you gotta be very careful with these. You know? You can do a lot with this. So, we're going to have to uh, be able to extend the cutter out. See, have to have a stub arbor so I'm not, uh, uh, that'll put the cutter right about where that uh, mark there is on this side of it so I'm not colliding with the, the work head. You'll see these work heads all barked up from just that sort of thing. Okay, that's the direction I'm heading. So I'm gonna use that uh, inch and a quarter 50 taper end mill holder in here with a short arbor for uh, grinding. Uh, some of the features on these cutters you can see this one here, and it's even more pronounced than the other one over here. If I can find it, 
Here's one that teeth to almost totally grown back, but it's notched right at the face of the tooth here with a cutoff wheel. And this one here has to have a whole bunch of relief. So I got to be able to um, gash the teeth <laughs> with a cutoff wheel. Okay, and there's other problems with these cutter grinders as far as extension. There's the the wheel head, and uh, it's really a juggling act to make things work. They have extensions for these, uh, but they can get on there and they can stick, and I kind of don't like them. And what I'm going to do is build another spindle uh, for this that I can extend over the table much more, and that'll make... Um, uh, creating cutters quite a bit easier as well as sharpening them. So this machine here, see I put that arm, it went right back. And I'll finish uh, grinding this one. I have this one to check out and see if it's round. And there's another one here, I like that. And then I've got these here that are really kind of messed up. And it'd be kind of nice to kind of get some of this stuff. Uh, that one's busted. Oh, it's got a crack going clear to the keyway. <laughs> oh, well, that one's not good. And uh, someone will fix that somewhere on the world, right? I, I see them repairing ball bearings. <laughs> so, uh... I don't know. Uh, this here has got to be gashed and you can see everything uh, is at an angle. So, you know, a cutter like this would cost quite a bit. And, you know, here's a pair of them here. Here's a pair here. This one's got a broken tooth, but it'll work. So these two and those two. And that's how people bought these things. Not, not everybody had a cutter grinder. Uh, most shops didn't. Uh, these cutter grinders were very, very expensive, uh, like back in the 1980s. It, 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 it would shock you how much I paid for this. I'm almost embarrassed to say. So, you buy cutters as a pair. And then you'd have a sharp one, and then you could send one to the sharpening service. And I remember everybody here, oh, uh, pretty much sent stuff to California, sent it out of state, I think. There's some cutter grinding service there that uh, most of the shops, so they, you know, they'd have two or three, like this here, there's six of these. So, uh, likely they're doing some deep cutting with these and, and you know, would have some of these off being sharpened and uh, and some sharp and one on the machine. So that's kind of how things work and how stacks like this end up. This type uh, does not work together, stacked together. So these are individual, all the same, all ground back, Things were uh, five and a quarter inch, and uh, they're they're way down uh, to uh, like uh, four and three quarters. Some of them. So the original teeth profile is long gone. What you see here would be like down here, and I think that's how the error got into that. I think I'm rambling a little too much, but I hope you get some from this. That, uh, the, you can see the cutter grind is pretty handy. I pull the arbor out of there and I stick it in there. And I'm going to do a little bit more work on that cutter. Stick some other cutters in. And uh, that cutter performed very well. Okay, well, I will be back. Uh, it's a little too early to fire up machines, but I will be back in here in an hour or so to do that. All right.